Hi everybody, welcome back to my Flea Tale Finds. I wanted to thank all of you for subscribing, um, leaving such wonderfully, unbelievably kind comments uh, upon my uh, returning to YouTube. You are like, you are all like sort of the incredible sun that would come out on perhaps a cloudy day and you just make everything so lovely. So I send all of you a virtual hug and I thank you and I thank you. Getting back to the jewelry, um, this is, I have mentioned that I've been starting to sell on um, Etsy under the name Flea Tail. And I'm selling in box lots of um, 15 pounds. And then I thought what I would also do is pull out um, various pieces of jewelry. Um, maybe some of, some of these are signed. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of what was going to be in this lot of jewelry. So this would be sort of my... Um, uh, set up lot um, as opposed to in in the boxes um, I wanted to go through the various pieces of jewelry with you to show you what would be coming in this particular lot and so this would be everything of course just not my not the display is included <clears throat> so let's start so this is a really cool and interesting bracelet by Listener. Listener made some really nice jewelry. This is, to me, not really typical of what they used to make, but very attractive. Has rhinestones and faux pearls in it. Um, these are bracelets by uh, a designer. Her name is Marilyn Schiff. Um, they were marked I think nine dollars each, but very nice. Um, you could even wear them with your real jewelry. Here's a lovely uh, damascene. Uh, it's called damascene bracelets. These are uh, m many of them are made in Spain. This one is not, um, but it has a really nice look to it. Here are more of the Marilyn Schiff bracelets. This is a lovely um, gold-plated Hawaiian flower, or um, it looks like an orchid. Um, then I have, let me show you this one. This is really nice. This is a more contemporary piece, but made really nicely. And these are kind of expensive. They're, uh, this one is by J. Crew, And here's another one by... Um, this one also by J. Crew. Looks nice together. And then here is yet another one by J. Crew. And don't they look great together? They would have each retailed for probably about, again, this is retail, and they all complement each other nicely. nicely. Now, this is, you know, con more contemporary jewelry. They probably would have retailed for maybe. $70, $80, something like that. But they look really nice. They sort of tell a story. Then here is probably a newer sort of Mila uh, Fior necklace. I'm not sure if this one was made in uh, Murano, hence the name Murano Glass from the Isle, Isle of Murano. Um, the, this, I don't know, looks a little bit newer to me, but um, very interesting, intricate, lovely color beads. And then this bracelet, which would sort of look nice with this in a group and these in a group. Then there is a Metropolitan Museum of Art pin. I don't know if he's a police officer, kind of interesting, signed MMA, which is for Metropolitan Museum of Art, as opposed to Museum of Fine Arts in Boston or the Alva Museum, all collectible, uh, but this one is uh, the Met Museum. 
And then there is this watch, which looks and says Movado, but I'm not sure if it's real or not. It does work and everything is here. Um, I'm just using it as a uh, saying it's a working watch. Um, here's a very cool pair of uh, designer signed clip wood and gold plate earrings. Kind of have like a French sort of look to me. Then here is a, this is a, um, called a clamper bracelet. Again, newer, but has a really nice look to it. Um, this is the, what we mean by clamper. It has a magnetic clasp, has a great buckle design, looks really nice on, very big and impressive. And here is a, um, Leah Sophia with the original tag, never worn bracelet, kind of looks a little bit like Brighton to me. And Leah Sophia, as you probably know, was a, um, they would have jewelry parties and they are no longer in business. Um, they made some very nice pieces and their things were rather expensive, uh, because the person who had the party needed to make money and they needed to buy from the company and the person who was helping assist with the party made money off of it, but um, really great look. Then here is a um, very nice, um, their Napier or Monet, this is a Monet bracelet. Again, you know, you can mix and match all of these things. I mean, they tell a lovely story. Then here's another pin. So this is kind of interesting because this is a um, revival pin and this one is made by an artist. Her name is Sadie Green. And so this is sort of, to me, like an Art Nouveau revival. Uh, there are many artists that do revival, whether it's a Renaissance, Victorian, Etruscan, on and on. Um, this is a glass cabochon that's in the center and... Um, just really nice detail over here. Then there are pieces like this that are sort of contemporary. This one is porcelain. Looks like it could have come from a, uh, a gallery. Um, there is, um, there are these, which are, it looks like quartz. I'm not sure. Um, it looks like quartz and um, semi-precious. Um, have a really good look together, separately, together, uh, with, and accented with these little silver tone beads. Then there is this necklace, which sort of has the same kind of feel only this is um, Ann Taylor, and these are actually lucite, but they give the appearance of uh, of a quartz or citrine um, or moss agate. Um, again, all faux, um, but to give the look. And again, when worn together, I mean, that's a really nice statement. So here is a, here's a Monet pin. Monet was quite prolific in their jewelry and um, is getting quite collectible again. This one has a nice sort of brushed, almost moving in the wind look. Then here's just an interesting sort of 1950s pin with the faceted, um, and bezel set rhinestones, a figural piece. Um, here's a piece that's by JJ. This isn't typical of their work. They're, to me, JJ did more figural type of pins, a lot of things with cats and cows and animals. Um, this one sort of looks like a sea anemone and has um, sparkly rhinestones in it. Then there is this rhinestone 
sparkly rhinestone, very 1950s necklace. This um, lovely uh, glass, it appears to be glass pearl on a um, black velvet neck cord uh, embellished with some Aurora Borealis uh, rhinestones. Sort of, sort of a simplistic look, but makes a nice statement. Um, then there is this necklace, which is also sparkly. Um, this kind of reminds me of the Titanic uh, piece, but it's, um, I believe that's glass and rhinestones. Um, this is a three strand um, shell necklace. Has a lovely sound and a lovely look to it. And it catches the light and has like a, a wonderful iridescence to it. Then here are that's my cat in the picture. He's very interested. Here are two art glass. Um, Parker, you ha no, you have to come out. Um, two art glass bead necklaces. Again, um, very popular in the 50s. Um, just bought a nice bit of color to the face, really dressed up an outfit. Um, then there are uh, several pairs of earrings. Uh, these, I believe, are Laurel Birch. These are Trafari with uh, a coral art glass look. Um, here's a nice contemporary uh, pendant. Here are um, here's sort of a, a faux, but southwestern uh, pendant. Nice to be mixed with. Um, similar colors and styles. I mean, that's what I like to do. I like to experiment with jewelry and see what goes nicely with other pieces. And then here are some other wonderful jewelry styles. Um, this is a, um, a pave gold tone bow pin, um, a faux, uh, I mean, a watch that would need a battery, but has a great look. Um, here's a nice Kate Spade piece. Um, this is sort of a, it's faux. It's sort of a David Webb uh, design um, who made incredibly expensive jewelry. And when you look at the real thing, you know why. Um, then... There is this lovely display that comes with it. So these are amethyst and turquoise and a semi-precious and a few other interesting looking pins um, and this choker. And I'm going ready, getting ready to put on another lot. And again, I thank you so much for joining me. Bye.